Welcome to Attican Plays Airport CEO. All right. Hi, this is Attican, and welcome to Series 2, Episode 12 of Airport CEO. Now, in Episode 11, we had uh, we finally kind of got our, our medium airport established. We we're pretty happy with it. It's running nicely. And I'm saying airport, I mean terminal. And I'm kind of using those two terms in this series interchangeably because I'm thinking of them as three different airport designs that we're kind of doing. We've done the little puddle jumper. We've done the square for the medium planes uh, with a little bit of remote access or remote stands. And we're going to do a third different uh, design over here for the large uh aircraft. So, um, so I, I did that on purpose. I said that way up front that I wanted to do kind of three unique designs so that we could, um, uh, you know, see three, three different things as, as if, you know, we played three times. Uh, so this one's doing okay, but I was getting very frustrated, having a lot of problems. Oh, and by the way, look right up here. We are now in beta. They have moved out of alpha. Alpha 36 is, is gone and we have moved to beta. And beta is a different world. Um, hopefully, more solid, a little better. Uh, we the main thing it says from the way these guys are managing it is the major functionality is in the system now. So we're done. You got your functionality. Enjoy it. Uh, that's that's the main message from all of this. Uh, you know, you move to beta, you're, you're, you're done with the experimentation. You, you have, you, you know, the major functionality is there. That's what I'm trying to say. So now it's just fixing it and tweaking it and adjusting the comments and that kind of thing. So what, uh, what I was having a big problem with, getting very frustrated, I, I confess. And you, you really, in a way, if you're going to play alpha, you have no right to be frustrated. It's alpha, folks. It has problems. Uh, but it doesn't keep me from getting frustrated. I don't think it keeps anybody from getting frustrated. So the problem we were having was that we would set up their, our terminals, Terminal 2 and Terminal 1, and I was going in and specifically assigning people to Terminal 2 and to uh, Terminal 1, like so. And the guy who needs to work in Terminal 2 would park in Terminal 1 and couldn't go to Terminal 2. And we had this big horde of people just standing here because they couldn't go to work. And <clears throat> that was happening over here as well. We would have people down here around the parking lot loitering around because they couldn't get to work. So here's what I did. And this is wrong. This To me, this is clearly a defect. I hope they fix it in the beta. We, I don't know, but we'll see. I made a sidewalk connection. I took out one parking lot, made a sidewalk connection that goes all the way over to our original puddle jumper, put this little building down here underground so that I could put in a stairway that goes up into the main building and then change the zoning so that this is secure, but this area is actually an unsecure area. It has a door right here that goes to the um, sidewalk for our puddle jumper airport. So now if you happen to go here and you have to work in two, you can walk over here, go down that, go down those stairs, take this and go over to your terminal or vice versa. Now I think that's wrong because to me the whole idea of having two terminals is so that I can define people to work in each one and keep them from having to have giant walks to get to work. I mean, I, that, to me, that's one of the main points of having the separate terminals. So I'm hope again, hopefully they fix that. But I, that's what I did. Some of you had commented that I had way too many staff because I kept trying to hire staff. Show I had signs that I didn't have enough staff, but they were all loitering over here. I kind of knew that. But what, he's, what are you going to do? You got to have the staff or your airport shuts down. Uh, but this does fix it. Some of you commented, connect them some way. I did reluctantly. I, again, it's wrong, but it, there it is. I connected them. The other big thing I did was uh, run a line over like this so that we could move our construction guys. We had them up here, and I moved them over here because over here is where the action is going to be uh, going forward because this is where we're going to build our third terminal, the one for large aircraft. 
Oh, and by the way, you don't have to have a design that's all small, all medium, all large. You can mix and match. Of course you can. But uh, I just wanted to do three very separate terminals with very separate functions so that we could look at three different designs. Okay. So um, what else did I do? Ah, our airport ratings. If you remember our scheduler, we had these numbers over here, the satisfaction of each airline. We had like, I think it was Nordic was 5%, and some of the others were like 20% or awful. And we weren't getting enough flights. Well, now we've we've bumped all those sats up. In fact, this is different now that I've gone to beta because the last time I saw this before opening it in beta, I, with an Alpha 36, these were actually 90 and 100. So that's, something's changed. But, you know, that's okay. Something's changed, but we've got them up to a better rating and we'll hopefully see more flights and the other thing is had it up to we were getting a hundred flights a day which is a lot more people and a lot more money you know you get more more money out of your investment uh, it's dropped down here to 89 and then on Monday the following day it's 73 so that these numbers have tweaked some from alpha to beta and that's okay that's okay we'll just adjust and live with it but they got better now how did they get better well i uh, kind of mentioned this at the end of 11 uh, or somewhere in 11 i went into the pricing and said okay and this screen's totally different now i i think i think this is better but it'll take me a while to get used to it yeah it's easier to see it really is um but I moved all these sliders. We used to have them all out there in the uh, as far as we could go in the orange, and now we've moved them back to be as far as we can go, as much as we can get in the green. And that means that these are prices that these um, are different. The airlines and the passengers are are happy with. You know, nobody's happy giving you money, but they're willing to pay this without without having a, a bad taste in their mouth. And uh, so that that did it right there that was the key thing once to change the pricing then it got more flights so that was the whole thing i was talking about a tycoon issue do i have to ask for more money in order to make more do i have to ask for less money in order to make more money by having more volume and sure enough that's what happened got more flights started making more money and did it by lowering the prices but we had the prices up high to start with because we really needed the funds up front so that was the strategy we took. The other thing we can look at is the rating that we're getting down here. We're now at 94% general aviation because, you know, they're all about the price, really, and, and we've given them quality stuff, and, and they're happy. So uh, 94 for the um, general aviation. Commercials at up to 86. There's a baggage uh, something, uh, the departing baggage not getting received. We may have to look at that. We may may need uh, more uh, baggage uh, trucks. You know, one for one for coming, one for going, so to speak. Uh, we'll look at that. But at any rate, look at look at how much better all of this is. And we're up to eighty six. I think we're I don't know seventy maybe before. Passengers are up to eighty. We've got to look at the staff friendliness. I don't know if. Um, this is because we're using a bunch of automated stuff. We'll have to look into that. And, and they want more higher quality items. And security is very good. So our overall airport is up to 89. I think it was 69 before, I think. I, don't quote me, but I think that was it. So just changing the prices made all the difference in the world. So now we, now we want to get into designing uh, our third terminal. And it's going to be, as I said, for large aircraft. And here's the way I'm seeing it. <clears throat> I'm seeing it as two, two uh, runways like this. And, and we really, we don't, we could do it with one, run, one, one runway like this. Um, in fact, I mean, well, I'll get to this in a minute, how big I expect it to be. We could probably do one. I'd rather have two, though, and, and keep them moving. And, um... So let's 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 do this. And I also want to give some space. I want to give a little extra space. These uh, runways are seven wide. I want to put a couple extra spaces on either side and treat them like they're 11 wide, not the runway itself, but uh, everything else I build, like pathways and stuff. I want to have 11 space width 
uh, on these pathways so that the uh, it's more realistic looking when they turn they don't bump into things stuff like that so let's uh, have it land to the north which is to our left right now and what I wanted to do is I want to come up here and I want to land it almost at the end but then I want to give it two extra spaces for the extra wide um, um, taxiway you know the space the, the easement or the the extra space and I don't care about well, do I care yeah let's give them two over here too all right so there there's gonna be our runway now uh, what I'm gonna do is lay this out I'm gonna use this to help me back into where to put the terminal then I'm gonna get rid of all this because I don't want emergencies I don't want to be dealing with emergencies that we would get from um, well, from the game, <laughs> for large aircraft when we're not going to be ready ready to handle them for quite a while. So let's think about this one. We're going to want at least, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus a couple more right there. And then two for you and two for you. And give them a little extra space, a couple more, and that's going to be our takeoffs. So we've got our, yeah, 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 takeoffs here, landings here, and that means that we're going to need a connection. Like so, and then a runway coming down like this. And the way I'm seeing the traffic flow is very, very simple. You come in, you loop around, you go to your stand. If you need repairs, you keep going, you go down to a group of uh, aircraft hangers down here and either way you go out right here so it's going to be super simple we shouldn't have to build a whole bunch of uh, taxiway it'll save us a lot of money and it should make the traffic flow quite good so um, at least that's the plan so taxiway I'm going to do a grass one in the middle to give me an idea of what what we're looking at here one two one two three that no, 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 no. I want some space here. Uh, one, two, let's give it four, and then we'll start at one, two, and then one, two, one, like that. Sorry, the, the weird counting is, I'm trying to figure out where's the middle of the taxiway, and I think I've got it. So if I'm figuring this right, uh, one, two, three will be the, the, the far side of the taxiway, a couple more spaces, and then a little bit of extra gap. So... Uh, we'll see how that see if this works out. So what that says is that a plane coming in landing could start hitting gates right here and there's no reason for them not to. There's no reason to move it anywhere else or try to centralize it. It doesn't matter. So we're going to have them start hitting the gates right here. So what I want to do is put in um, what's the deal here? A basic aircraft stand. Oh, it's small. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, we're going we're gonna to put in uh, these large concrete ones. They can be all the way against this if we want to, but I think I want to have... I want to flip it the right way first. And uh, let's see. They're going to need... The two, we're going to make sure that there's room to get around them right there. So that's as far as we want to go. We want vehicles to be able to come up there. Let's give them a couple extra spaces. And then from here, you're going to have one, two, three. That's the width of your runway or your taxiway plus two more spaces there. That's where we'll go. And then we'll just line up. And what I want to do, talk about that for a minute. Right now, we're getting about, um, let's see, uh, let's see, email latest operations report we're getting over a little over six thousand passengers from our puddle jumpers and medium and and we were getting about a thousand uh, nine hundred to a thousand on a good day medium or a puddle jumper so the medium added about five thousand now the big planes are 
roughly, roughly twice as big in terms of number of passengers. That's good enough for estimating purposes. And I don't want to get a whole lot over 10,000 passengers. I mean, it's a blue field. We don't, we don't need to run 25,000 passengers a day through here. And we could, I mean, you know, but, and we did. I mean, the Series 1, we had 21.5 or something like that. But uh, I, don't, I don't want to shoot for about 10,000 or, you know, it's, if it's more, that's fine. I don't want to go under that. And so 10,000, we need another four. So we need about two thirds of what's down here, but it's twice as big. So we really only need one third, which would be three or four stands. So I'm thinking if we put in six stands, six of the big stands, and had one for emergency, used five active, that we would be in pretty good shape. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to hit the right button and go like this. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> Again, hit the right button. Six. So there, that represents a kind of a straight line shot at these um, <clears throat> six stands. One for emergency, probably be the last one out here. Could, it doesn't matter, or the first one, or in the mid, it doesn't matter. Uh, but one of these will be emergency, the other five will be uh, scheduled flights. So, we're going to lay out our terminal based off of this, but what we're going to do here is instead of going all the way out like this, you know, like matching the whole thing, we're going to make sure that we have enough to go out here in a little walkway that goes out to this one right here, and same thing over here, a walkway that goes out, but then well, our main, the meat of the thing will be along here. Now we're on level zero, which is ground floor, but I'm thinking about level two because we're gonna have jetways here, no remote stands, absolutely no remote stands for this uh, terminal. So if we wanna do that, I think the way to do it would be maybe to come out, uh, let's see, we'll have entry here, Maybe we go five past that, that would be good. And down here we go one, two, three, four, five past that. What size is that? 60, oh, I like that, that's a nice even number. 60, um, now how big do they need to be? Well, it's interesting, it doesn't have to be ginormous, but I wanna have room to put in, um, uh, airline lounges, at least a couple, and some nice shops, and, and just have some space. So let's do, shoot, it slipped on me. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, five, two. Yeah, I, I thought so. It, it said 62, I wanna make sure it was over on this end. So uh, it was, so we'll take out these last two like that. Okay, and then, uh, hmm. Then on the upstairs, and, and we need it on the downstairs too, we're gonna have a little uh, walkway that goes out here to allow you to hit that gate. And we'll give it a we'll we'll move it out this way a little bit so that we don't have to have this one and this one so close to each other, the entry, the flow of traffic. It's not a big deal, but that's what we'll do. And that will give us an interesting little shape to this thing. And we'll do the same thing over here. We'll go like that, and a couple more. Take out those walls we don't need. There, now our airport's starting to take shape. Now what we could do if we want to make it even more interesting, I guess, is we could build the, um, the front of it kind of off, you know, uh, offset or inset or however you think of it in here a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it a little, little shape, that'd be fine. Let's see, um, man, how do you, how long is that? 
it is, oh yeah, 60, 60. So 30 would be halfway. I'm gonna mark that just so I can tell. Right here's the halfway. So I'm thinking we'll have, since it's an even number, we'll have a couple of doors like this, because this is the middle right there. So we know where the middle is. Now we can get rid of this. We don't need this. And if that's the middle, and it's 15, we could go, how about if we went uh, 10? Yeah, let's do that. Let's go 10 by 5. Let's go 10 in each direction is what I'm trying to say. Like, like here, we'll go over 10 by 5. Five, ten by five, but we actually want all of this to be thought of as one big room. So those those doors are going to move. Just a minute, I'll move them. <laughs> okay, uh, doors. We'll move there and take them out of there. Okay. There we go. Got a little shape to it. And, and I mean, if we wanted to, I don't know, it might look better to have this come out a little bit more. But I, I like that. That's nice. That's different. Okay. But it's super simple because it's just a straight shot. And you're going to be coming in here and you're only going to have to walk three gates in either direction. So everything's going to be close by and there's not going to be any giant walks where we're worried about people not making their flights because they can, just can't walk that far that fast. Yeah, I like it. All right. <clears throat> so that's the basic, basic design. Now the question is, how do we want to get people there, the, the, the ground traffic? And I also want to think about where do we want our services? Because if you'll notice, now we're, we're tight here. We've got space here. I mean, we, I could think about moving all this down a bit and leaving some space out here. But I think what we'll do instead is we'll put our service buildings like baggage claim. I think there's going to be one baggage bay for these three and one baggage bay for these three. And then along that, we can put um, maybe around here. Because keep in mind, this right here these two spaces will be a service road. We'll connect them with service road like this, running around this way and around this way. So that gives us room to have service roads here. And then let's just see how big a hangar is. I don't have a good sense for that. Aircraft hangar large. No, they're not that big. They're not, they're not awful. Would like to have five um, only because you could have, uh, it's conceivable to have five large aircraft emergencies at the same time in a worst case scenario. Uh, you know, because they typically have up to five things going on. Now, if you got an oil crisis and a pandemic, that takes two of your slots. And you also got still, we'll still have small and medium plane emergencies. But still, if we really wanted to keep from having to micromanage it too much. If we put five in, we should be covered regardless of what happens. So let me run the, the um, our little marker for the runway down here like this. Now what I want to do with it actually is come down here and go, uh, go back on to you know, kind of find that place where it goes back on like that. So now you can kind of see the whole thing. You land here, you come in, you stop off at one of these gates. When you're done, you back out and you just go out here and take off. It's all very short, very nicely contained. Should be good. So now we can run a line through here, which will be for our hangers. And I'm just curious to see if the hangers would possibly, possibly fit. And they, they won't fit this way without 
Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, they could we could put them right along the... Oh, oh wait. Ah, something else I need to show you, tell you about. Um, if you haven't seen the game or if you're not playing it or whatever. These medium hangers, see how there's... Um, we've got the taxiway to the front of the building, the front of the hangar. Well, we've got the service road on the back. And if you look right in here, I have a pushback truck that is not assigned to one of these stands. Why is that? Because... These um, planes, when the, when the emergency will land at a, at a uh, gate, then it will go to get repaired, or anything we found out here has to be repaired. They'll go here, they'll go into one of the hangars, but they have to be pushed back to leave. So you have this room back here and this truck to service these so that when a plane is finished being repaired and they want to leave, they can be pushed back and off they go. So we're going to need the same thing over here. We're going to need a service road running kind of behind, if you will, our hangers. So we could put our hangers. We could leave a service road of two. Let's see. like that, and then we would want to have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's give it a couple of extra, like that. If we did one, two, three, and flip it around four, five, we could easily put five in there, and I'm just trying to see if we have enough, and we have plenty of space right here for uh, another waste depot, catering, you know, uh, another baggage claim if we want, whatever we want to do. Uh, that would work out great. Okay, so that that will work out great, because then we'll have just a simple uh, taxiway. Shoot taxiway, which is going to be one, one, two, three, four, five. See, that's interesting. They give it two spaces. Uh, if this is the, no, this is not the middle. They give a space here. Let's, let's honor that space and say we're going to go one, two, one, two, three, like that. So, so, yeah, so this will be, okay, cool. So this will be, you're coming down, you'll go over here, you'll come in, then you'll go back out, you'll go that way, and you're gone. Beautiful. Now, <clears throat> that tells me that all this is going to fit nicely, it's all going to work beautifully, and what we're going to do now is delete most of this, most of all this out here before I accidentally start this thing running and they start building any of this stuff and we get charged for it or uh, we have to go through some special process shutting down and destroying it rather than just being able to hit this big old bulldozer. So there we go. There, we got our money back. We uh, got our layout. We figured out where our terminal needs to be. And I think we're going to let our, our guys build the terminal. Now, the only other big question I have is, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I can't recall if I said this, but I'm thinking that we're going to have three gates domestic, three gates international, or vice versa, it doesn't matter, um, so that half this large terminal is doing international flights, the other half domestic. And um, so what I'm thinking is maybe we'll have two escalators, one going toward the domestic one, going toward the uh, international. Uh, and they, uh, who knows if they'll use the right one, that uh, beyond my control. Um, oh, oh, oh. Let, me, let me get rid of this little nub right there. And I want to see, where would the wall be on, on this side? It's one, two, three, the fourth one. two, three, the fourth, whoops, shoot, one, two, three, the fourth, like that, okay. There we go, all right. So um, this is level zero, we need to get up to level two, and we need to put something in to let our workers get up there uh, right away. So uh, 
And if we go up to level two, oh, I see what's wrong. We haven't built level two. Yeah, we still got plenty of money. Let's build both levels. Sorry, I need to go up one level and then do it. And I will say one of the reasons I, I kind of stopped and just played the game for a while just to accumulate money is so I wouldn't have to piecemeal this too much. Now it turns out that if you look at what we spent, we had six something, we're five, well, we needed, you know, two two or three million would have gotten us started. So I probably could have turned this around faster. But this is, this is all right. I'm happy with this. All right, so um, now what we want to do here is take out these walls that we don't need. The tool won't let you build kind of odd-shaped uh, foundations. You have to kind of put them together in pieces. And when you do, you get the walls. And so I don't want the walls. And there may be a command, if anybody knows it, for building the foundation without a wall. Or that may exist. I don't know. And this wall here doesn't need to be there either. There we go. So there's our basic level two. Level one matches it. Yep. Beautiful. Now, we noticed that, that we were off-center. Well, we were. <laughs> it's your fault. We were off-center on... Um, this thing here, I had the door on the wrong side. I meant to put it over on the right side. I put it on the left, and that knocked everything off one. So re redid this, added one here, took one off here on both floors to kind of move everything one over to the right, and then uh, centered up the doors on that. So now, now it's correct. Um, there's the same distance here, 20, as there is over here, 20. So now, now this area is centered, and the doors are centered within this area. So that's all straight. And then I put doors in here, centered uh, uh, in this little area here and here. And these will be the exits uh, for out. Of, this will be baggage claim. You know, for domestic, and you get your bags and leave. International over here, get your bags and leave. So now. Uh, I had played with a bunch of different configurations of this. I tried putting all the security together and then having half of it go off to um, passport check and domestic go off on its own. And actually it ended up being simpler and more spread out, a little less uh, congested to do it like this. So I'm gonna walk you through what I finally came up with. And of course there are any number of ways we could do this. But the way I've come up with is you're gonna check in here and here and you're going to, in fact, we're going to have the check-ins tied to a baggage bay over here, which will be tied to the stands over here, and check-in over here tied to a baggage bay over here, which will be tied to the stands over here. And once you check in, for, for, internet, for us to do domestic first, it's simpler. You'll check in here, you'll go through security, you'll go up this escalator, you'll pop up up here, and you will have... There will be three gates up here. One of them will actually be um, kind of a standby for emergency. And now I got to think about this. I don't know if they're going to hit. Are they going to hit us with international emergencies where I have to do passport checks? <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Uh, we'll look into that later. What we may have to do is have our emergency stand have an optional way that you could actually go through a passport uh, check. And, and we'll, we'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with that later. I, I just, I, there's, my brain's about to explode here. So we come up and we go to the three, oh, the two domestic stands over here, or we come off of the um, uh, emergency one. So the two domestic ones, uh, you'd arrive, you'd come downstairs like this, down the escalator rather, and then you go out out through a secure exit um, into baggage claim. And this is a secure zone. Everything else is unsecure down here on this side. And then everything up here is secure. Now on the international side, it's a little different. You have unsecure check-in. You go through security into a secure zone. And then you go through these passport uh, stations to enter 
into a an international secure zone downstairs, which which you then go up this escalator, and you go upstairs to here, and you pop out, and there'll be three um, gates up here for international flights. And uh, also on, on both these, there will be an airline lounge. One, we'll have one international carrier with its own lounge, uh, probably back here. This could be staff rooms and maybe the lounge will be here. I don't know, or maybe the lounge will be a nice big one here, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. Actually, I think the staff rooms are going to be downstairs. We've got a lot of room here. No, no, this is spoken for. There's room in here to put in the staff room for everybody. Or we could, you know, of course, go down here in the basement and do it. But I think I think we'll take advantage of this open space here, put a staff room here that's very centrally located. So wherever your job is, you're, you're very short haul away from it, either through security and up or, or whatever. And that reminds me, the one thing I haven't done is put in a staff-only security check. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm, I don't think these are going to be that crowded. I think we'll let, I think we'll let that go for now. And, and again, that's something we can revisit. Do we need to maybe put a simple one here, open this up a little bit with staff going through uh, to go out, up here, and same thing over here. Uh, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we if we come to it. So uh, staff room and international. What was it called? Yeah. Check in, or it's into security, comes into a secure zone. Goes through passport into an international secure, pops up into um, here, goes to your gates. Oh yeah, I've already said all that. Uh, in the lounge, got the lounges. Everybody's uh, happy and ready to go on their flights. Arrivals come in, they go over here, they go down. They go down here. Uh, remember they're coming out of international secure down here. Um, uh, that Z key didn't want to work. Um, you come down here and you're in an international secure zone. You go through uh, passport check, which will then put you into a secure zone. You're coming out of international into secure. And then you'll take uh, the secure exit here to go out to the unsecure area where baggage claim will be and the door to get you out of this place. So that's the basic flow. So what I'm going to do is stop right here for this episode. I'm going to go ahead and play ahead and let, let our construction crews get busy building this out for us. And when that's done, we should accumulate some more money as that goes along, which is really not a problem. We've got plenty of money now. And we're going to uh, move ahead from there and set up check-in and baggage claim and baggage bays and uh, uh, for both sides, uh, international and domestic, and get that uh, set up in our next episode. Probably the catering and cleaning as well. We'll see how far we can get in the next episode. Uh, but the very last thing, regardless of how many episodes it is, the last thing we want to do would be put in hangars and stands and runways so that it looks like a, a real large terminal, a true large aircraft terminal. Uh, and I'm hoping by doing that, we won't be getting these large um, emergency requests uh, we'll just keep getting the medium and smalls until we get this finished up. And when we get it finished up, we'll be ready to handle the emergencies. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe and join us for our next Airport CEO video. Thank you.